I'm back with me now is President Biden's special envoy for climate, former Secretary of State John Kerry. Uh, Mr. Secretary, China permitted, as we say, six times the number of plants than any other country. You've said you had good meetings with your Chinese counterpart when you were in Japan this week or last week. But overall, President Xi has clearly decided for now not to work with the U.S. He is still refusing to reschedule Secretary Blinken's visit. He hasn't had a call with President Biden. There are no military to military contacts. You know how important that is. U.S. relations with China are at an all time low. How can we ever achieve our global climate goals without having Beijing working with us? We can't. It's that simple. We can't. Yeah. <clears throat> There's no way that any one country can solve this crisis, uh, and particularly if we are large emitting nations. We are the world's largest economy by far. We're a $23 trillion economy, plus <clears throat> the nearest is China at about $17 trillion. And then you go down into single digits. So uh, it is imperative that China and the United States find a way to cooperate with respect to the climate crisis. Now, originally, when President Biden first talked to President Xi, they both agreed that we were going to keep the climate issue separate because it's not a bilateral issue. It's a universal threat to the world. And all of us have a stake in taking steps to address it. So for, for a period of time, that appeared to work. They agreed that they would separate it from the many other issues. And let me just say to you, I'm not glossing over any issue whatsoever that we have with China. There are real issues, serious ones, and a whole bunch of them. But climate has, we don't have, a, we have a clock that's ticking on climate more immediately. And we have an imperative to try to move. Now, I just had a conversation with my counterpart a week ago. Uh, it's the first time we've been able to talk in a, over a month or so because he was sick and now feeling much better and doing better. And, and we're glad for that. He's an experienced, knowledgeable interlocutor. And um, he extended to me an invitation uh, from the Chinese leadership to visit China, to come and sit down, pick up our conversation from where we were a few months ago. But that was interrupted by the events over Taiwan. Uh, and so sometimes things have just crept in and, and gotten in the way. My hope is, because it's imperative for the planet, that China, the largest emitter in the world, with 30 percent of all emissions, help work with the United States. And it's not a question of, of U.S. giving away something. It's a question of all of us getting something together. By cooperating, we can accelerate the transition. We can reduce the emissions. Uh, particularly since China does have coal, it is critical that the phase out from that coal uh, accelerate uh, and that the emissions be captured. Everybody understands that in the world, that the emissions are the problem. It's the way we burn our fuel. It's the way we heat our homes. It's the way we move our vehicles. And, and so we have to change propulsion. That's what's happening with electric vehicles. That's what's happening in heavy industry, steel, shipping, other things. These folks are moving. CEOs of companies around the world are moving. And so I think China and the United States could conceivably make some progress that is mutual uh, without us, uh, anybody losing any advantage in the process. But we can't get to our goals globally without every country being part of this. I mean every country that is a major emitter. Uh, yesterday, President Biden hosted the 20 major economies of the world, and all of them spoke up with commitments to the things they're doing. It's just that we're not, all of us, doing enough, and we're not doing enough fast enough. Well, let me ask you about this. The uh, Biden administration mm -hmm. greenlit the $8 billion Willow Project for Alaska's North Slope. Now, conservation groups are calling it a carbon bomb. In fact, the Biden administration two year in two years has already approved more applications for drilling on federal land than the Trump administration had at this point. Uh, they were already, you know, permitted. So, you know, those decisions had been made and I'm not sure he legally could have turned them back. But yeah. isn't he going back against that pledge to move away from fossil No, because, uh, well, <clears throat> first of all, the president, the president, with respect to the Willow Project, faced a situation where a company had bought legitimately, uh, leases 10 years or more ago. Those leases were ratified. They were legal, uh, uh, contractual. 
and they had a right to go ahead. Now, what they're going to do isn't going to happen for some period of time. It just doesn't happen that fast, Andrea. In the meantime, more and more electric vehicles are coming online. As the electric vehicles come online, demand for gasoline is going to go down and, and, and oil use is going to go down. And I think what you're going to see is a transformation here happening a lot faster than people imagine. That's what we're seeing now. Things are happening faster. And what I think the predictors are not able to tap into is the unexpected sort of exponential, not quite Moore's law about, about uh, you know, sort of progress and the rate of it, yeah. but because energy doesn't lend itself to the same thing. But we are moving faster. I think the market's going to change. What, what is in Willow is minuscule compared to the overall demand challenge that we face. And the key here is to move faster in changing demand and changing supply and in bringing online the new technologies that can scale up and make the difference. That's how we win this battle. Well, just looking at your schedule, the indefatigable John Kerry, Mr. Secretary, thank you so very much. <laughs>